Today we're going to dive into Photoshop. We're going to do something a little bit, uh, a little bit cheaty, maybe. We're going to look at how you can fake a sunset in pretty much any photo. Now, I know what you're thinking. I do know what you're thinking. That's not photography. That's cheating. That's more digital art. I totally agree, actually. And I wouldn't ever claim to do this and then claim it was a photo that I took. But I think it could be an interesting kind of process to go through. And I feel like you can learn stuff about your own photography, about photography in general, by doing stuff like this. And you can kind of end up learning a little bit about what you might be looking for out of, in this case, a sunset photo and about editing that and all the kind of processes that go into that. So that's what we're going to do today. It's Tutorial Tuesday. <laughs> Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday, where each and every week, each and every Tuesday, we bring you a brand new, fresh photography tutorial. This week, of course, is no different. Let's dive into Photoshop. I've already told you what we're doing. I don't need to repeat it. We all get it. So I'm diving into Photoshop. This is the photo that we're going to be working with. Now, this is obviously taken uh, not at sunrise, but not a million miles off sunrise. I think it was a couple of hours after sunrise, so the sun is a little bit higher up, but we've got some nice light. You know, it's a nice kind of subject. It's this really early wintry morning. I've done a kind of long exposure with the sea here, and I like these rocks. I love this spot anyway, but this is a nice bit of light, nice bit of cloud in the sky. It's a good one to work with. Now, if you're going to do something like this, where you're going to fake a sunset, you can't, well, you can kind of do it with any photo to an extent, but it's going to work a lot better. It's going to be a lot easier if you use the right kind of photo to begin with. So in this case, a photo where the sun is a little bit lower in the sky. So we've already got some directional light with shadows by these rocks and things like that. We can work with that. And it's not going to be completely ridiculous in terms of just changing everything. We already have kind of a good basis to work with. So that's important. If you're choosing the right photo to turn into a sunset, you want to choose one that's going to work well. We've got directional light. Maybe the light isn't ridiculously harsh because that's going to cause problems as well. So the first way we could do it is we've just got this photo here that I've already edited. I've already brought to Photoshop. No problem. I'm going to click this little lock symbol here to unlock it. And then the first way we could do it is literally just to do a sky replacement within Photoshop. And Photoshop has a bunch of sunsets that you can just pick. So we can go up to here, edit, sky replacement. We can come over here. The last one I was playing around with is the night sky. Let's ignore that for now. Let's go ahead and click this drop down menu here. Let's go uh, sunsets or sunsets pack one. Let's pick a nice sunset here. So something like this one looks pretty good. Yeah, let's try this one, see what this looks like. Okay, that's a lovely sunset. Let's go ahead and click OK. We can change a couple of things here, like the color temperature of the sky, the brightness of the sky. I think it's basically fine. We can do a little bit of adjustment here, lighting adjustment on the foreground, color adjustment on the foreground. Look at that. That's made an instant massive difference. Let's go ahead and click OK. Photoshop's going to put it as a new layer, new group, which we can then affect if we want to. But the main thing we will need to affect now going forward is actually the foreground. So we might go ahead and do an adjustment layer. Let's go for a curves layer and have it above the background, but not above the sky. So it's not affecting the sky. Just bring down the, uh, the kind of midpoint there, darken it up a little bit. I think that actually looks really good already without really doing too much work. I mean, to be honest, that looks pretty good, right? That's um, that's already pretty strong. We might want to go in. Let's make a new layer here. Just put that below the... Actually, you know what? I'm going to leave it at the top. Let's use a paintbrush and let's sample one of these colors around the sun here. So I'm going to hold Alt and I'm going to just left click on one of these colors here to get a nice orange. And then with a nice sort of big soft brush, uh, let's bring the flow down to about 40%. That means we're kind of building up painting on there so we can paint over things and build up uh, rather than kind of 100% opacity. And let's just dab around the sun. Let's just dab kind of around here. Little bit of sort of warm light emanating out from there. Change the blending mode. Let's go for soft light. Bring the opacity down. Maybe we'll change that to screen, actually. Bring the opacity down. Turn that off, turn that on. Just gives us kind of a nice glow. We can always reduce the opacity of that. We can always take that out as well if we want to. And I think that it should be a little bit brighter around the sun as well. So I'm going to do a similar sort of thing. New layer. This time I'm going to go for uh, white, just straight white. 
and we go for a nice big brush let's go like this build that up a little bit by sort of painting over the bits we've done just a bit of this I just want that Sun to be a bit brighter let's change this to let's try this one maybe as uh, maybe as lighten let's bring the opacity down to something like 26% it might work better as, uh, as something like hard light maybe I think that looks pretty good we could do something like that maybe bring that right down to about 14% okay that looks pretty decent I think and then we could always go in and do a bit of dodging and burning as well to actually kind of add some shadows so we could do this in a couple of ways let's first of all get a curves layer maybe bring that down even further we've got a layer mask here it's all white which means the whole photo is being affected let's press ctrl i that's going to make it all black now we can use a brush with white and we can just paint on that darkened curves layer so we can literally just go ahead and do a bit of this paint it on kind of in these shadows now like i say this is where it kind of plays in really well with the photo already because we already had these kind of darker areas we already had that directional light but i'm just painting in where it would make sense for these shadows to kind of be now we can do the exact same thing but in reverse where we actually just create a curves layer so let's go ahead and do that in the other curves layer let's bring that up a little bit kind of the exposure in the midpoint again let's reverse or invert that layer mask so control i to do that and then with a, a white paintbrush again we can just go ahead and paint on some lighter areas now what we'd be doing here is really trying to paint on that kind of rim light on these rocks make a mistake control z just undoes that no problem but we're just really kind of lighting up these areas where the sun might be hitting now you want to be a little bit careful you don't want to go too mad with this otherwise it's definitely going to look a bit uh, unrealistic but we can just kind of brighten up some of these areas and this is basically just dodging and burning but using curves layers which i quite like to do to be honest with you so we add in these different areas i think that looks pretty good let's turn that off turn it back on turn off the shadows turn it back on i think that looks pretty good let's look at the original photo we can do that by holding alt and click on the eye symbol here to just see the original layer and then to where we've got to now that i think has worked really really well one final thing we might want to do is make a new adjustment layer and go and color look up load 3d lut and we can choose one of these uh, looks now this is uh, essentially a lookup table this is going to change colors contrast it's a little bit like a filter for your photo it's a little bit like adding a specific look to it but it's going to marry all the elements together so the sky the landscape it's going to be really good so let's go ahead and click something like let's try teal orange plus contrast now that's obviously very intense but we can bring the opacity down to something like 30 percent turn it off turn it back on Look at how it kind of brings those colors together. Now you might not like that particular one. So let's try another one. Let's try something like, uh, let's see what crisp warm looks like. That's quite nice actually. Let's bring the opacity up a little bit to something like 60%, maybe a little bit less, 45, 40. That looks really, really nice. If we look at the original photo and then to this one, I'm really pleased with how that has come out. I really like it. I really like what we've done with this now of course this is using an adobe sky we could do very much the same kind of stuff with our own sunset so let's bring in a sunset that i've actually photographed so i've just brought this one in here i don't know if this is going to work because we've got these bushes here but let's let's find out now i'll just bring that in i'll just match that up to bring it to the top of this photo and let's bring this down to roughly just above the sky replacement group now we can actually open up this sky replacement group here let's bring in our new photo here into the group and let's take the actual layer mask for the sky you click that alt left click and drag onto our new photo up here the uh, the photo i've just dragged in and that's gonna apply that pretty well we just need to do some slight adjustments so i can turn off this original sky we added in and I can just go in and use a clone stamp to get rid of these kind of problematic areas over here. So let's zoom in. Let's hold Alt, use the mouse wheel. Let's zoom in and let's go ahead and just press Alt, left click, select part of the sky. Let's 
must make sure you have the correct part of the layer selected. So not the layer mask, but the layer itself. Let's press Alt, select part of the sky. It's gonna ask us to rasterize the layer, no problem. And let's just go ahead and paint this in here. Now it shouldn't paint over the landscape because we've got them on different layers. There we go. Might just wanna do a little bit of this just to sort of marry it up a little bit, but there we go. So now we've got our own sunset coming in there rather than a Photoshop one. So you might feel like that actually kind of validates it a little bit more maybe, but I think that looks pretty good. But whether we wanna go for that one or for the Photoshop one, I think we've done a pretty good job here. And I think that's a pretty effective way of creating a sunset photo from just an ordinary landscape, uh, not middle of the day photo, but you know, earlier morning photo, we can create a sunset from that without too much trouble. Now, let me know what you think. I'd love to hear your opinions on this. Do you think this is just completely cheating? Absolutely not interested. <laughs> I, I totally get it. I do totally get it. It's not photography. It's definitely more sort of digital art and uh, majorly photo manipulation. So really, really changing things up here. But I'd love to know your opinion on it. Let me know down in the comments. Of course, there's a full list of all the kit used for this photo, for this video, for everything down in the description. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. There's more content coming every day through to the 24th of December. I will, of course, see you in the next video. And as always, thanks for watching.